Right, it's seven minutes past eight and we're turning our attention to the big story in English football at the moment which is whether or not Ange Postacoglu is going to be uh, uh, formally announced today or is it uh, going to be another 24 hours Martin Lipton is with us Martin it looks like this is a done deal for Spurs is it? Well it seems that way yeah I mean there's lots of uh, negotiations the deal appears to be done between Tottenham and Postacoglu uh, suggestions last night that uh, Celtic have signed it off as well so uh, the last issue, I guess, is over who, which members of his coaching backroom team he can take with him. But it, it looks like there's going to be an announcement either today or tomorrow. But what is apparent and evident is that Pastor Coglu is the new manager of Spurs. Well, only 72 days, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, if, they, if they'd uh, signed him immediately and waited until the end of the season for it to all go through, it would have looked like they knew what they were doing. However, notwithstanding that, right? There is a possibility they've got a really, really good manager here. Look, I think he's proven here, um, in Australia, uh, in Japan, and now in in, uh, in Scotland that he knows what it takes to win. He's done a very good job. You know, winning titles in all those countries did a good job with Australia. Um, and Spurs need a reset. That's absolutely certain. Uh, they've had drift and dither for far too long. Um, it needs a project manager in the mould of Pochettino. The issue, of course, is we'll find out whether Postacoglu is in that mould. Uh, but what I, you know, when I talk to the Scottish reporters who, who cover Celtic regularly, they're very effusive about him and complimentary and say that he's really made a massive difference. And Tottenham needs someone who can make a massive difference. I think, generally speaking, Martin, the reaction from Spurs fans has been a positive one to, to this uh, news. But... Are there any reservations? I, I guess the the lack of experience for Ange or success in European football maybe is one thing. I know Spurs won't be in European club football next season, but is that one concern maybe? I think it's fear of the unknown more than anything else. I mean, some of them wanted a big name, even though the big names clearly haven't worked particularly well for the last uh, two or three seasons. Others, you know, think that... The, the person that they themselves want should get the job come what may it's not like that look it's pretty clear that Arna Slot was the first real real first choice as it were once they settled on a target he looked like he was going to come and that didn't happen so now it looks as though for some people they're getting you know somebody down the list but they weren't that keen on Pochettino originally in fact they wanted Van Gaal at the club and um, it was only when he turned them down that they ended up with Pochettino who without question, was the best Tottenham manager of the entire Premier League year, which is now 30 years. The style of play that Ange Postacoglu adapts as well, that'll be really fascinating. Presumably he just carbon copies one to the other, but um, it, it would suit a lot of these Spurs players and the talk of Kyogo Farahashi potentially joining uh, Ange at Spurs as well is an exciting one. Well, uh, to use a, the phrase of a poet who wasn't particularly complimentary of Ireland, but... Uh, the same answer to gain a power must it maintain um, you know this is how he got the job by playing in a certain way it would be foolish for him to go you know try to reverse course if that's what he's good at if he, and also there is not a single Tottenham fan who would not welcome an embrace a team that actually tries to score in the first 20 minutes that'd be quite a novel concept um, you know there was front foot football is is really important I think to Tottenham fans we haven't seen it they haven't seen it for too long now Postacoglu will bring front foot football it may not necessarily be immediately successful remember you know, there, was, there was talk of Pochettino being ditched after five weeks because he lost lost a couple of games it, nothing is that easy but I do think that by embracing an attacking philosophy by trying to get players to play in the right direction rather than backwards and sideways it won't be long before the fans really take to that obviously people have been thinking about what Harry Kane would look like in this scenario and if they play three up front that could be brilliant for him if he if he is intent on breaking those records and uh because it, 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 the conversation has switched from uh, Bayern Munich want him, he's not that interested. Uh, Manchester United want him, that could be difficult to get the deal done with Levy. Real Madrid want him, harder to turn down. But now it's also, he's only got a year left. Sit out for the year and take the money yourself. Well, that's what I think will happen. Um, and he may then sign a new deal and stay at Spurs. Let's find out, or he may decide to go. There isn't a single Tottenham fan who would begrudge Harry Kane's decision, whatever that decision is. Let's, let's put it in those terms straight away. 
Uh, the question of will Harry Kane flourish in a Poster Cogley system? Harry Kane will flourish in any system because he's that good. He just scores goals. He scored 30 goals this season in the worst Spurs team of the last 10 years. That's how good he is. They were terrible. And yet, in any other season, he'd have been top scorer in the whole in the, in the entire Premier League. You know, this was a freak season where Holland would score 36. But Kane's performances were, I would argue, outshone those of Holland because he was playing with a load of rubbish. Um, and that's why he is thinking of, of considering his future because he's given an entire career to Tottenham and far too often Tottenham have let him down. I, I think that it could be the perfect time then for Postacoglu in a way to come in, still have Harry Kane, still have Youngman Son, be able to play with Charleston. Maybe, maybe they um, sign somebody else and, and uh, the attacking trio isn't just the obvious attacking trio who are at the club at the moment. But it is possible that they all have great seasons playing front foot football in front of a stadium that is on fire because, as you say, they've been starved of this for so long. And that actually, that's the type of thing that inspires Kane to stay eight and spend the rest of it. So I guess what I'm saying is the full range of outcomes, as you've outlined, are now back on the table when it felt like actually this relationship was naturally coming to an end. Yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 look, I might be entirely wrong here. And you can, tomorrow, say, actually, I want to leave and go and play for Rochdale. But I, I think in his heart of hearts, Harry Kane would love to spend his entire career at Tottenham as long as he could win some trophies. He wants to win a trophy. He wants to be the all-time Premier League top scorer. As he's already the all-time England top scorer. He would love to win a trophy with England as well. There's few opportunities to do that, as we know, although there's one coming up. Uh, next summer in the Euros, assuming they they qualify, if he could, he was he would stay. But you know, two years ago, with the when City came calling, it was I always said it wasn't so much that he wanted to leave, as that he felt he couldn't stay, and City messed it around and messed up a, a pretty easy transfer when it was simple that put the money on the table, you get the player. They didn't do that. They tried to play City games with Daniel Levy, who decided right, that's it. I'm not going to sell. He had more cards in his hand then, obviously, with three years left on the contract. I think that Levy knows if he sold K now, unless it is Real Madrid, because no one says, you know, no one would no one blow Levy if he sold to Real Madrid. He would, they, he would get inordinate stick if he sold to another Premier League club, which I think rules that out. Um, so it's, it is a, a dilemma for Tottenham. But also at the same time, they've got the best English striker of potentially of all time. I'm not saying he is, because that's a you know, matter of conjecture and opinion. But I would argue he's certainly in the conversation of the greatest Eng- English strikers of all time. Why not keep him? You mentioned there, and we've spoken before, Martin, about Kane's desire to, to beat Alan Shearer's Premier League goal scoring record. It, but as you say, if a team like Real Madrid comes in, it, it is tough to turn them down. And, and the talk of Karim Benzema potentially leaving the Bernabeu only adds fuel to that fire. Um, so is Real Madrid a realistic option, given the, the desire to hit, to hit that sheer goal-scoring record? Well, think of that shit. We are, if you put it this way, how about this? You go to Real Madrid, you sign a three-year deal, but after two, you come back to Tottenham and you score your 40 goals over the next four seasons in your late, in mid to late 30s. That's a viable option, potentially. You get your chance to win trophies with Real Madrid because you're going to be in the top two, aren't you? I mean, you're, you're always going to be competing for the league title and the Champions League with Real Madrid. So that might be a, a situation. I'm not saying that is going to happen, by the way. I'm just floating a hypothesis there. Um, but he, he is desperate to beat Shearer's record. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I do think, given the reality that players tend to move around more now than they did then, if he does beat Shearer's record, that record may last forever. Are trophies at Tottenham the ambition next season, Martin? Or what's the ambition? Because it, it plays finish this season, missing out in European football. Like, what's the, what's the number one thing? Is it to get top four or is it to win trophies? Look, at Christmas, Spurs look favourites for the top four. They should have. They should have been a top four side this season. The implosion was due to a number of factors, starting with the the manager deciding to blow up the entire squad because he basically wanted to go back, wanted to go home to Italy. So, with the goals in in the in the attacking lineup, they could be okay. But look at the, the rivals. 
Arsenal, City, United, Liverpool, Chelsea, um, Newcastle. You know, it, it isn't actually that easy anymore. The ambition will be top four. Only playing one game a week possibly makes that easier. Um, and the demands of Champions League, for example, will really tell, I think, on Arsenal because they need a bigger squad and they, you know, they struggled with the squad they had this season trying to play Premier League and Europa League where you can play the reserves. Well, they, you know, if they're stretching that with Champions League football as well and that intensity, that's going to have an impact on them. So they need significant um, strengthening. Um, what we're going to see with Chelsea, nobody really knows. Um, but the ambition's got to be top four. Yeah, whether they make it's another matter. I think aiming for top four and falling just short of playing good football would be a significant move forward from what we've seen this year. Can I ask you about a few of the um, potential successors for Postacoglu? At one stage, uh, Celtic actually wanted Eddie Howe and were waiting a significant period of time to get him to come and then they end up with Postacoglu. Um, Brendan Rodgers has said he wants to take a year out in the style of Eddie Howe, taking some significant time away from uh, a relegated side has proven to be a good idea for Howe in, in terms of his perception and also you know, giving him the opportunity to refresh. Uh, Rodgers is being linked with Celtic. It seems a little bit maybe as a, a knee jerk to what's gone on. Where is Brendan Rodgers at the moment when it comes to potential big jobs in English or European football in your view, Martin? Uh I think it's difficult for him to go into a really big job unless he goes to Celtic, but that's a step back and, you know, never step, never never go back is often a phrase used in football. You're judged by your achievements first time round. Uh, and whilst Brendan was undoubtedly successful um, at, at Celtic, you have to remember that this was in the time when Rangers were coming back from their enforced demotion to the, the, the pits of, of despair in League 3. Um, and they weren't the same force they are now I think Brendan would probably benefit with waiting until Christmas and then see what's available because I think something will be available uh, in the Premier League which is, I think is his, his preferred place to work would he be offered a job in Europe I'm not so sure not in a major league probably so I think his smartest play is to just give, his, give himself a few months rest recuperate recover his energy um, and wait for the, the, the door to knock and the phone to me. Has his reputation been damaged by the Leicester situation? I don't think so, actually. I mean, look at the, the Leicester situation from his perspective is, I won the FA Cup with Leicester City. And yes, we were relegated, but I wasn't in charge when we were relegated. I still think we could have got out of it. Um, other factors hasten that, you know, the, the impact of, of the pandemic on the owners of the club who run a duty-free business, or the or are the duty-free operators in Thailand, was significant, more than significant. It hampered Leicester City. So they were, I think you could say, they're the last victims of COVID almost. David Moyes is, is one of the other names that, um, I don't know if this is, again, wishful thinking. Is David Moyes going to be out of a job if West Ham win this competition? Because it sounds like he's talking about planning for next season. I, I just can't read that situation very well. I think that his admission the other week that, and I know you might think his the statement of the bleeding obvious, but his admission that Declan Rice was unlikely to be at West Ham last season would not have gone down well with the owners. Because I think they would argue that by saying that, he actually reduced the asking price. Right. Because he's really made it. And I think that might be used. Uh, I hope not. And I think it would be very hard to get rid of him if they win on uh, win tomorrow night. But if they were to lose to Fiorentina, which I think is a is not an unreasonable suggestion that they might lose to Fiorentina, although it's one of those games that could go either way, I, I think he may well be a casualty of war. And uh, you know, would that would Celtic be a job that interests him at this stage of his career? It's so long since he was up in Scotland that you could see him doing that um, if he wanted to. And he's a proud Scot. You know, talk to David, and you know, the, the longer you talk to him, the more the stronger the Scottish accent gets. I think. So, I mean, a part of that would be something that would definitely appeal. You know, he's got a, a, a history with the club, and you can see in, uh, a justification for him for him making that that move if there's nothing else available. But you know, will Celtic pay the sort of money that even a mid-sized Premier League club would pay? I'm not so sure. 
Uh, bear with me, Martin, uh, as I throw this one at you, uh, because a couple of names that uh, were linked with Tottenham at the weekend, albeit very transfer rumour linked. Um, James Madison and Harry Maguire. Will there be any interest in North London for for one or both? I think they certainly look to explore them. I, I think Madison's a great player, uh, and Tottenham desperately need a 10. That's what was, you know, ever since Ericsson left, they haven't had a number 10. Those cells, they didn't do it, uh, and Dombele didn't do it. Now they're both back now, but not for very long, I don't think, uh, after their loan spells. So, yeah, that would be an option. Uh, as for Maguire, well, if it's. I wouldn't have a problem with Maguire. Got to be honest, he's a very, very solid player. He's not had a great time at Manchester United, but he's still key cornerstone of England. You know exactly what you're going to get for it from him. And if you, uh, he's a sort of you know a change of manager, a change of environment, a change of uh, everything around him, maybe really good and make him go back to be the player he was at Leicester. He will never be the quickest player on the pitch, but he knows his position and. Yeah. There's a different level of expectation at Tottenham to United. Spurs fans would really invade the centre half with his physicality and his his determination to win the ball. I mean, I think that's what's been lacking actually. Um, the one they've got who does that is Romero, but he ha- sometimes I wonder if there's anything between his ears because he doesn't think about where he's making silly tackles. Now, every ten- defender does make a kamikaze tackle occasionally, and that's part of the, of the nature of the beast. But I think. Maguire makes him in smarter places um, and he doesn't make as many reckless challenges as Romero does. Do we expect a significant transfer, Kitty, this summer for Spurs? I think there has to be. More importantly, they have to get rid that they, they create a Kitty by selling players. But remember, Tottenham have a, a huge income stream that other clubs don't have. So this season, just gone, they'd have grossed, I think, in excess of half a billion pounds in all forms of income, which includes gate money of five to six million every home game. Um, they can afford to spend. They still uh, have the lowest uh, wages to revenue uh, ratio of the entire of the entire Premier League. So they have the ability to spend, but they wouldn't do need to get rid of Sanchez and uh, probably one of the midfielders. I think uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Hoberg went because I think Desuma and Bentancur can be the first choice duo or two in, in that in that midfield uh, area. I think that uh, Tanganga goes, Perisic goes, Moore's already gone. There's a few to get rid of. It, um, the uh, Devon Raya has been. Perm- permanently linked basically since the I don't know maybe five six weeks into the season as the natural successor to Hugo Lloris there's been a lot of smoke around this is it going to happen are they pulling the trigger on that or does everything get suspended until Postacoglu comes in and goes yeah uh, that's fine he, he fits I think to a degree that the manager's final choice but clearly there have been ongoing conversations Raya uh, wants to go to Tottenham Brentford have already bought his successor from Freiburg the asking price at the moment is 40, it's haggle time. Uh, that'd be an interesting conversation, wouldn't it? Matthew Benham and Dave and Daniel Le- Levy in the same room arguing over a few balls. Um, Frankie, I don't actually have any money on Benham, but there we go. Um, but I think it's likely that a deal will be done. Luis is clearly uh, going to go, and he's been a great seven. He's done 11 years at Tottenham, it's time to move on. Um, so that's good, you know. Let's not be no one be critical. Uh, uh, Luis's performances over the bulk of his time at Tottenham have been of the highest standard. He's a major reason that Pochettino's team was so successful, or so close to being successful, to be more accurate. Um, but Raya looks like the real deal, and Spurs seem to be, from everything I'm hearing, front runners for that. So I wouldn't be, I, I would be surprised if he isn't at, at Tottenham next season, which obviously is a kiss of death, and he'll end up playing for somebody else, but it looks that way. Uh, Martin, step two of three of Manchester City's treble completed the weekend. Uh, what did you make of the cup final? Generally speaking, like the City performance was, was I guess acceptable and, and very good in parts as well. And, and you look at the likes of John Stones, who was brilliant, um, and just a remarkable start to the match as well. Yeah, I mean, what a what a hit for the first goal! Six and a half out of ten, I'd say the performance was by City standards, um, because that's, they knew that's all they needed to win. Uh, I've been saying to people that they won, they've already won the treble. They won the treble when they beat Real Madrid because that was the only the only test they had left. 
Um, and since then, they've, they've completed the Premier League, which they virtually won. They won the FA Cup, which I thought they were always going to win. And I can't see how they don't beat Inter Milan because they're better from 1 to 11. In fact, they're better from 1 to 18. Um, so they do what they have to do. I, I'd love them to play with their, their absolute A game on Saturday in Istanbul because we could be treated to something truly special. Um, and they weren't great. I don't think on Saturday, but they didn't need to be. I mean, they were always better. Um, United were given a helping hand. A couple of shaky moments at the back. I think they a little less shaky with Edison in goal than Ortega. That's not to decry Ortega, but Emerson gives them far more certainty and assuredness. And so that will be back in on uh, on Saturday. Otherwise, I think it probably goes with the same team. I don't think he necessarily changes it. He might make the odd changing game but I mean I think that's his best outfield 11 isn't it outfield 10 um, 100% and, and, and I guess from a City perspective they'll be happy with, with large aspects of it as you say but from a Manchester United perspective Martin where is the gap like how far off them in the league, in a league perspective do you think they could be next season of course they're trying to get in Kane they're trying to get in Mason Mount uh, that one looks closer but is, is, is the gulf ever widening or do you think Eric Ten Hag is the man to narrow it I think it has narrowed, um, but I think it's a cavernous gap that you can only close incrementally rather than in one jump, um, unless City go backwards, which isn't likely in the short term. Um, so all they can do is try and get closer. You know, they're, they're third this year. They can possibly get second next year. In fact, quite reasonably aim for second next year. They want. They can still have a great run in Europe, in the, in the Champions League. They, read, they did win a trophy this year, which is positive. They got to a final of another competition. So I think if you're a United fan, it's, it's quite positive. If it hadn't been for City, you'd be pretty pleased with this season. The trouble is it's City who are cleaning up, which therefore alters the dynamics of the way you look at the world. Um, but they're the best team. Look, City have been the best team in Europe for three or four years. They just haven't proven it. Well, this season they will prove it because they're going to win the Champions League because they're the best team in Europe and they should have won should have certainly won in at least one if not two in the previous three years we'll leave it there Martin great stuff thanks so much for joining us this morning cheers bye bye so Martin Lipton giving us his thoughts there on the main stories from the weekend's football